Go to 60D. Socrates is going to take Aesop's fables and the hymn to Apollo and use that as a basis for constructing a myth. He's not generating a myth. He's borrowing, drawing upon these two to do what he's doing. As a result, he makes an interesting distinction between what a poet and what a philosopher is and what each should be doing. I need to get it from you. What is it? Who's that? Next. In this puzzle, he cites the influence of God. So in this study, then, I would like to know the role of God in this discussion exactly at this point. All right? And when you do then you're going to then go into the next curious thing. And we want to see how all of this plays a role on dear old Socrates. Okay, that's our goal. I'm sorry, what did you say about Socrates, please? No, 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 no. what did you say? Could you repeat the last point about Socrates? Socrates is in prison, it's his last day, and he's creating something. And he's using Aesop's fables and the hymn to Apollo as a basis for then writing what he thinks is the implications. Because he's had a certain dream that repeats itself throughout his whole life. Uh, what is the dream and how does it fit his study and creating these two, using these two works as his creation. Because in doing so, he's going to make a distinction between the poet and the philosopher. But we won't be able to understand that unless we're sure about the role of God. So therefore, these are the forces that are coming together on Socrates. Let's see how it plays itself out. All right? Easy? Oh, yeah. Right. Compared to what? Yeah. <laughs> Just a few variable terms, but other than that. Well, as long as you regard explaining all this stuff as fun. What, you like Plato too? Well, when he says easy. Because once you understand this, then you can understand the whole dialogue. Want to, want to do some work? Ching. Right, right, right. All right, we'll use it. it. Happens to be right. Uh, 
Okay. Notice in the Rouse, the Rouse does not include the hymn to Apollo. That's because he has a greater insight into this and he saw it wasn't necessary. <laughs> or, he goofed. goofed. Or he has a bad understanding that filtered his translation. <laughs> okay. Let's get a couple of quotes. Got some? Look here, it's the last day of his life. They come in to see him, and they see he's riding away, and they want to know what is he doing. He's saying, I'm taking these two pieces of work, and I'm using that as a basis of composing. What for? Why? Why the urgency the last day of his life? Uh, could you take your hand? Uh -huh. That having written these things, I did not intend to rival him nor his poems, for I knew that would not be easy. But I was trying to find what the meaning was of certain dreams and to purify myself. If in the case the repeated commands of the muse to me were to make this, for they were such as this, the dream having often come to me in my past life, appearing to my view in one way or another, but always saying the same thing. Are, oh, Socrates. Are you suggesting Socrates is doing something like this to purify himself? That's what he said. What does that mean? Why is he doing that? I uh, must find something that's impure? Well, okay, all right, I'll take it, all right? Because he's right. Of course, that must mean he needs it. Must mean he has, he has an interesting idea about dreams. No, go keep reading. I interrupted you. Oh, thank Not you. Not so? No. We missed the dream. Wait, what did you say about music? Did you say something about music? Go ahead. No, no, didn't you just say? I Go ahead. <laughs> no. Well, God, Paul is a God of music. But also medicine. Yeah. The dreams tell him repeatedly to do what? Right, what page to, to make uh, and work at music. 60. Uh, to do what? Uh, oh, that's right. Oh, Socrates, it said, make and work at music. And indeed, in times past, I thought this was to cheer me on and to encourage me for having taken up the very practice itself that I was doing. So that just as those who encourage the runners in a race, the dream was thus encouraging me to do this, to make music exactly as I was doing. For on the one hand, philosophy is the greatest, is the greatest kind of music. And on the other hand, I was doing this. But now, since the trial took place, and also the festival of the God, which was keeping me from being executed, I thought that I should, if in case the reoccurring dream was commanding me to make this kind of popular music, thus I should not disobey it and make it. Uh, could you now answer the question? As a consequence of getting this dream repeatedly, he comes to a conclusion. And the conclusion is? I might have been wrong, and I should do what it's telling me to do. What did you say? 
I might have been wrong. I, we don't give a damn about whether he might be wrong, do we? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Socrates might have been wrong. Yeah, okay, come on. Well, yeah, that was a purification. You said it was a purification. This conclusion is a purification. Go ahead. For I thought it was safer not to go hence before making sure that I had done what I ought by obeying the dream and composing verses. I mean, it doesn't say purification, but it's implied. There's actually two good terms for purification. They're both the same in this one. Apo, apo, see, where am I? Apo, see, no. Well, this, you call that purification. Uh, even the lexicon does, not only me. Really? Yes. It says it's purifying from guilt or pollution. And in the middle, it's uh, to to obtain expiation for a crime. Well, like it probably is the op Clear your conscience. I'm oh, sorry. Clear one's conscience. Gotcha. I was just saying that I like it because of the the apo part, but the hosio part is holy, right? So holy away. I was just my immediate thought was like to be made out. holy or something like that. Yeah, go ahead. You wanna add? No, I was on something different. I'm sorry. I thought that was that. Was that. Okay. It was that. Barbara, do you wanna to add to what you're saying? Uh, no, I don't I, no. He was Making of that there wasn't a term for purification, so I was just saying it may not show up in the load, but it definitely shows up in the Greek. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we talked this morning about the difference between this and the other term catharsis, which um, is a term that has as its root cleansing, whereas this root does this doesn't have as its root cleansing. So there's a distinction. What distinction means? I don't know. Well, it's huge, right? Because purification comes up so many times later on, and it's with that other word, kathiro, right? Catharsis. <clears throat> the lobe doesn't have purifying. Could you pick up the quote? Oh, Socrates, it said. It's at, uh, it's a different translation. Oh, Socrates, yeah, what, what 60 the E. 60E, okay. Right, 60 E. Socrates, it said, make music and work at it. Make music and? Work at it. Look here. Oh, yeah. Music King. Would you agree that doesn't make any sense? I don't know. What kind of sense should it make? Or how do you see that it doesn't make sense? Look, if there was anyone here who ever made music, would that statement make sense to them? Oh, we have Yanni. He makes music. Yeah. Yanni? Well, let's call on him. Yeah. He's gone. He's gone? <laughs> Just when we need him. It's working. I had it. Uh, they don't hear it back there. I would, uh, it came to my mind if we could review perhaps uh, the, how Socrates defines music in the Republic, or the music. I don't know anything about the Republic. As usual. Yeah, I'm, I have a bad memory, too. Well, not the Republic, but in there he talks about music, right? Rouse says, get to work. Rouse says, get to work and compose music. It's a different, yeah. different sense of what's being said. What page is that? Look here. The Rouse says, get your work, compose music. 
perfectly makes good sense, doesn't it? Does this make sense? Does this quote make any sense? Yeah, just. Yeah, it makes sense. I would say it makes sense. Would you agree? Hey, would you agree we can understand that? Sure, I think it's easier. Yeah, because then you're, you're getting to, you're starting the process and you're composing music as the Get result. Get to work and compose. Yep. In other words, saying the thinking. same thing twice. Yep. What? <laughs> saying the same thing twice? No. Not, well, there's no music. Compose music. Get to work. Yeah. Start composing music. In composing and compose music. music. Yeah, yeah. I One is adding an urgency, but it's the same thing. Compose music. Or is it get busy no. and, and make music? Well, well yeah. yeah. Busy? You know, get off your butt. Get off your butt. Get off your butt. Just like Nancy said. So he's, so we get, Socrates is in prison, right. and he's been right. lazy, right. and the dream comes in. Right. All right. When you're reading, no, Plato, is repeating dream. Plato, 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 yeah. Rouse looked at this and he says it doesn't make any sense. He made sense out of it. Right. So therefore, what do we do? We call on people who might look at the Greek and say, what the heck is going on here? Since this is clearly an interpretation. By the way, did uh, any of you know, uh, uh, do you know the Balboas? <laughs> Is it likely they may have made a translation? Like, yes, very likely. Well, what did they say? I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> Come on, get in the quote. I'm not. <laughs> you didn't bring your own translation. You still have ten. It was more yeah. 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 Two imperatives. Toye and ergatu. Toye musikan and ergatu. Mm -hmm. So make music and work at it. Yeah. It's like anybody who's ever played a song on a guitar and then tried to do it better and then maybe right. work on it. Yeah, work, work on, on it. it. Make it better. And, and work on the music you're making. Yeah, yeah, so to improve on it always, right? Perfect. So there's two different... Perfection. Commands. Yeah, so there's two different commands. Yeah, yeah. One would be to make music, and the other one would be to then go back and improve on it. And cultivate it. Yeah, cultivate good. it. Good, more. Come on, you're on a good target. Come on. Does, does music have to be the, um, the object of the... Hey, there's one... Creating and the other practice. Yeah. 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 Is it? Yes. Yeah. Is that there? That's on the there. left hand side? I think so. That's what I that's what I thought was going on. Oh. It's okay. it's oh. Really. Because then there are two separate things. Right? Work at it. It needs a practice. Look here, yeah. if we're dealing with philosophy, that's what we're dealing with, mm -hmm. then there's a twofold study. You study it and you practice it. Therefore, they are distinct and different. We have to discover that. Look here, what's the role of God in this section? Okay. I thought it was there. Well, well, you thought what was there? The role of God in this section. Do you mean, uh, do you mean what are you looking for here? 
<laughs> right. In relation to he's, he's supposed to he says he's cultivating the music and they're gone. Yeah, that's one part. So yes. this whole work is a study of mythology and philosophy, the two. Huh? He's seeing the poets on the side of myth making. What's Socrates doing with myth? That's the key we want to get. Hmm. So the role of God, what precedes what we are now talking about, is that Socrates creates his own myth about pleasure and pain. There you can see what he attributes the role of God. Do you agree? Yeah. Let's take a look. We need a reader? Go ahead. Um, what a strange thing. Okay, so this is at 60 D. What a strange thing, my friends, that seems to be, which men call pleasure. How uh, wonderfully it is related to that which seems to be its opposite, pain. In that they, they will not come to both. Excuse me. I'll try it again. What a strange thing. Uh, you're in the. Would it be easier if I read the rest? 60 B, yes. Uh, that would be at the top of page 463 in the old Rouse. Uh, second paragraph. Then some of Crito's people led her away crying and beating her breast. Socrates sat up on his bed and bent back his leg and rubbed it with his hand and said while he rubbed it, how strange a thing it seems, my friends, that which people call pleasure and how wonderful is its relation to pain which they suppose to be its opposite. Both together, will not, both together they will not come to a man, yet if he pursues one of the pair and catches it, he is almost compelled to catch the other too. So they seem to be both hung together from one head. I think that Aesop would have made a fable if he had noticed this. He would have said they were at war and God wanted to make peace between them and could not and accordingly hung them together by their heads to the same thing. And therefore, whenever you get one, the other follows after. That's just what it seems like to me. First came the pain in my leg from the irons, and here seems to come following after it. Pleasure. <clears throat> okay, look here. You have to look at that and tell me what he is doing. Agree, he has a review of pleasure and pain. The whole dialogue is going to continue this analogy on another level. The other level is, These are opposites. So are these opposites. What is he doing with therefore pleasure and pain? They're irreconcilable. There's no way you can put them together. One follows the other. Unless you do what? Have to come from the same source. This one is connected with what he calls the chains, isn't it? in his myth. What's the role of the chains in that quote? The better cause pain. The way to get out of this terrible dilemma of the opposition between the two is that you have to free yourself from the chains of pain and suffering. Then you can get out of this duality. Wait a minute. 
Is life and death opposites? Are we an equally well chained to our view of life? And the only way we can get out is to free ourselves from whatever it is that binds us to our theories of life so that then we can ex experience true death. Forget that. Just a background. Right? That's where we're going. Look here. That's great. He's creating a myth. He says, that's what poets do. Therefore, in this respect, he's acting like a poet. Is he also criticizing Aesop's fables? Yes. Right? Notice the criticism. Can you pull it out of the text? Maybe, but I... And if the two were united together, come on, pick it up from there. I need a reader. Barbara? Just as if two were joined together from one summit. And it seems to me that if Aesop had envisioned this, he would have composed a myth that God wished to reconcile this warring opposition. But when found to be impossible, he united their summits well, he, he united their summits to the self. And through this, whichever way one may attend them, whichever one may attend them, the other one will also follow after. Good. What is he doing with the myth? What is his criticism of Aesop? Socrates is doing with his myth because in it he's criticizing Aesop and that will tell us what he's adding to a myth that makes it significant well, philosophically. Aesop settles on just having them hang together in constant uh, juxtaposition but doesn't show that there's a dynamic that one might have that would influence the other or that there might be a way what you just did. Right. What is that called? What is it he's adding that Aesop did not? A way out. Uh, a way to reconcile the, opposites. the irreconcilability yeah. of these two opposites. Yeah. What's that called? What is he adding? I'll offer a word. <laughs> it's the word you like. Is that in the Logos? Right. Like, what is the adding? What is his criticism of Aesop? He's adding something. Hey, I wish Aesop, ha, wish he could have done it, then I wouldn't have to do it. Then we have an insight into what kind of myth Socrates is writing using Aesop. Since he's discovered his weakness, and we know what he's going to add. The particular dynamics going on that can reconcile the inevitable conflict between opposites. I was just going to say that uh, Maria said... Well, that's why I just thought I'd beat you to it. We agree. Yes. <laughs> right? It was a harmonization. Uh, a reconciliation. If we are right about that, then the whole dialogue is a study of myth under the aspect of logos. 
Look. By the way, now look. We're going to be looking at the Theseus myth. That's a controlling feature of the dialogue. But then, Cebes and Simeus also have a myth. This whole dialogue is about the understanding of myth philosophically. That is, using the logos as a tool for understanding the relationship between the two. Wait a while. These two myths are the principal cultural religious beliefs of Cebes and Simeon's. So look here, let's put a word in here. They're religious myths. They have a great cultural impact. What if Socrates is able to use the Logos that these are irreconcilable? and singularly irrational. If that's what he's doing, he's reforming, come on, what would you say he's doing in the dialogue? Reforming culture and state beliefs. Because we can put in here They have a common religious myth. If we apply the logic going on in this dialogue, we should be able to see that they are just as irrational as Cebes and Simeus's myth. Of course. Therefore, 
which is study of the logos and mythology. Can we find that in the text? Is that here? It's there. Is the last one on the list Latter Day? Latter Day Saints. <laughs> no. And they call it the Latter Day because uh, it just happened the Latter Day. No, forget it. Lately. Okay, come on. Where's evidence? You got it. Just a quick question, though. Mm. The examples that you gave here, Christians, Jews, Islamic, Latter Days, they all seem to be in a particular class of religions. Yes. Not all religions. Um, you can throw in a few more. <laughs> yes. But we are positing that there are irrational beliefs that cannot withstand the scrutiny of the Logos. Therefore, watch them. If that's true, then there's one myth that will mirror the Logos. And that's the Theseus myth. Should we read it? We have a couple of So, look here. Why does Socrates, well, what is the reason that there is a delay in the execution of Socrates? To what does he attribute it to? Uh, theft the will of the God. No, it's the mission to deal That's with this. Death. Yeah. Then this is their cultural belief. This is the Greek cultural belief. The question is, will it escape scrutiny? Yes. So what do you mean? Now, that assumes something. That assumes that this dialogue, there should be a relationship between the myth and the dialogue. Right. There either is or there isn't. Oh, by the way, how many people are mentioned in the dialogue that accompany Theseus? Twice seven. Decepta. Are there 14 people mentioned? Uh, there are 14 people named at one point in the dialogue. There's a list of 14 names. Watch. Key, key question. <clears throat> because there are more than 14. So, were there 14 mentioned by name? Yeah. Except for two people weren't mentioned by name in the list of the 14. One of them was Vito, one of them was uh, Socrates, and then there were some supernumeraries also that he didn't want to account for. Polydorus, Critibulus, Father. Yes, there are 14. I'll be damned. Uh, let's see. Um, 59B. 59B. If there are 14 mentioned by name, and Phaedo is also said to have been on that journey, then it doesn't fit. That means there are 15. Yeah. No, it's, it's 13 by name. No, it's 14. From, I just made a count, it's 13, and then Fado would be 14. David. 
Apollodorus, Critobulus, his father, Hermogenes, uh, Epigenes, Ascanes, Antisthenes, Stestippus, Meneximus, well, that's nine. Yeah, keep going. And then of the foreigners, Simeus, Simeus, the, uh, 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 Simeus and Cebes, uh, oh, Adonides, and Euclides. And Terpsion. And Terpsion. Okay, 14. That adds up to 13. 14. No, 14. 14. Yeah. You counted the father. Oh, wait. I didn't count. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I counted the I father. Finger, yeah, I, I counted the father. Yeah. Yeah. I missed Fedondi. Uh, How many are mentioned by name? Did you count? Yeah, we got 14. 14. Exactly. If Fado was present, that makes 15. To Rue. Therefore, the myth doesn't work. Therefore, the dialogue is a failure in terms of that point. Right? Say yes. Thank you. See? That's my verification. Well, wait a minute. Maybe Phaedo is the hero. Nope. It'd have to be Socrates, right? Socrates would have to be the hero. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. All right, okay, I'd throw that out. Look, it's a very nice dialogue, but it flops. Agree? If there is an analogy, it should be used strictly, should it not? Does it or does it not? I don't know. Well, were they 14 plus the hero? Mm -hmm. Look here. If they're 14 and Socrates, they're 14 plus Socrates. Then Socrates has to go with the 14 and slay the Minotaur and then return. It can't be, it can't be Phaedo. Hmm. Oh, by the way, hmm. only the hero, Theseus, knows that he slew the Minotaur. The 14 don't experience it. He has to come back and say, hey guys, I did it. And they go home. They have to believe it. So the 14 do not know the nature of the kind of death that the hero slew. The Minotaur. Oh, wait a minute. Suppose the Minotaur can stand for death. Hmm. That's rather curious. Because the way we're reasoning, uh, what happened to my other shoe? Uh, it's uh, on the floor. Ah, uh, down there. Uh, to, to free oneself from, thank you, thank you, right? Look here. To free oneself from the bondage, the chains of your view of life, there's only one way to do it. That is to escape, and if you escape, you know the nature of death. They are opposites. So therefore, 
What does it mean to slay death? Not the fear of death, because the 14 have the fear of the death. They're being offered as a sacrifice. Hey, this fear of death is the very basic element of their particular myths. So if you can show they're holding in principle an irrational myth, at that moment they should see it's inadequate in understanding death. Well, I mean, he takes them through the reasoning, but at the end they can't let go of their own religious myths. They can't let go of the, right? They can't let go. They can't. I don't know how to explain that. Doctor takes them through the argument, but at the end they are concerned because they won't have Socrates around to take them through the argument again, and he tells them they have to sing that like a healing chant. The argument, take themselves to the argument again and again. So obviously they are not free of their own beliefs even though they have gone through the argument. So um, they can't be in the position of Theseus. Socrates is in the position of Theseus because he he has seen death, mm. has practiced death. See, if, if there is if death is a, if there head. is a practice of death, then it makes sense over here that there are two elements. Yes, there is a practice of death. And this is, there must be a practice or a yoga yeah. of death. And only Socrates is that. Yeah. Separating, yeah. separation of souls. Yeah. Work is a practice or yoga of death. Now, I asked the question and I disappeared. It fell idle, as it were. Is there any basis we can find in the text that shows that Socrates, in fact, is basing his re reflection on all of this myth and what it means and showing its rational and irrational side to participating in the logos. What is, formal question, what is the role of the logos in the introduction to the Phaedo? Now, the problem is, uh, you're not going to find it, but it's there. I, I found one. <laughs> I, found, I found one, but this my um, there it is. Depends on how you like to translate Go a ahead. couple of words. Um, what? Give everyone where you are. Oh, it's uh, one something. Oh no, it's uh, sixty-one. Bravo. 61, everybody, 61. So I composed a hymn to the God whose festival it was. And after the God, considering that a poet, if he really is to be a poet, must compose myths and not just accounts are not just logos. There it is. So it's, it's kind of an upside down comparison. He's saying Therefore, that poets need myth, the, not logos. The poet must be doing what? Mythologizing. Right. And the philosopher? Must be doing logos. Logos, right, right. And of course, that's a different translation that's yeah. in the law. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that translation, right? Or the poet participates in logos to some extent, but when a philosopher makes a myth, it's on a higher level of mythos. Yeah, but see, Socrates is not creating a myth alone. He's adding a logos to it, yeah. remember? So it's not just a mythos, but right. a logos. 
So right in the beginning, we he see he's doing it and then specifies it at that quote that just uh, David just read. So therefore, we should feel, hey, this whole dialogue is about the relationship between myth and logos. Yeah. Therefore, we should be able to go back and keep that in mind as a study and then look at one, two, three. By the way, has anyone ever done this? Seen the irreconcilability of those two religions and then see that in and of themselves they are irrational? <laughs> what do you mean? You can't do something that's irrational. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Enough. Didn't Pierre Grimes do that? Pardon? Didn't Pierre Grimes do that? What's his name? Grimes. Like I dirt? Believe. Grimes? Well, it sounds that way, but um, not grimy. Grimes. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> you mean what I Hold it. Comment. I just want to say that I really appreciate that you brought to mind the fact that yeah, Socrates, that great human being, was still working at the very last day. He was still perfecting, no. practicing. practicing to the no. very end. And he wasn't resting on his laurels. He was saying, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I should do this. And something good came out of it. Right. I was doing it. Yeah. <laughs> to the very end. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Yeah, and the rest of the dialogue bears that out, doesn't it? So, is it not worthwhile to make sure you understand the introduction to the dialogue? Yes. We won't be able to answer your question unless we do it. Does Proclus do a commentary on the church? Does Proclus do a commentary on the church? Worth ah. Does, Pro Does Proclus have a commentary on the introductory myth? Yes. Is it worth? Is it worth looking at? Uh, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Pierre. Oh! <laughs> Whoops! <laughs>